All right, let's see what Mark's got to show us with his vision of Spag Bowl. And I'm guessing, Mark, there are no peas in the Spag Bowl. There's definitely no peas in sight in this what recipe. What is your problem with peas? Which the, I mean, they're great. Fish and chips, mushy peas. Yes. Love it. Peas in Spag else? Bowl and no. Shepherd's Pie. No, it's a big no-no. Okay. No. So what have we got you here get some then? emails about that You now. will. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a great family favourite. You know, everyone loves Spag Bowl. It's a little twist on it. You know, this is one of the, um, you know, the go-to specials, what we do in the, uh, for staff meals in the kitchens. And so everyone in hospitality will know this. So a little bit different today. Instead of beef, we're using lamb mince. Um, we've got some spaghetti, which is the same. We've got some mushrooms in there, you know, that's instead of the peas. A little bit more texture in there and Fair a enough. bit of chilli and some fresh herbs, you know, and a bit of red wine. You can't go nice. without um, red wine in there just to rich in that sauce up. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. A great winter feast. I mm. quite like it. Um, okay, cool. So uh, the recipe, you've got the recipe, haven't you? I've got the recipe. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, it's all up here. <laughs> yeah, he knows it, which is good. Uh, we'll get into this very soon. Great to have you with us. We are in the Beko kitchen and there's a family favourite right in front of me. Probably the most made pasta dish in the world, <laughs> if not that? New Zealand. No, I mean, just, just from common knowledge, just from going to people's houses and having spag bowl, but I've never had Mark <laughs> spag bowl. And I'm quite excited because earlier when we were talking, I didn't see any mints and I was like, this must be a really fancy spag bowl. Uh, but the mince has turned out. No, no, now. we've got the mince You've now. You've got yeah, the mince, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So this recipe, take us through it. Right, so really easy and really, really quick. And I'm going to show you how to make it even quicker. Right, so I've got two pans on. Quick. Okay, uh, good. I've got me water to, to cook the pasta on as well. Yep. Right, so I've got a big pan. And in this pan now, we're going to start cooking the onions. So we're, we're, it's all about building up flavour. So you can chop them up... Um, really finely with a knife or if you want if you want to speed th uh, things up even more even just pulse them in a in a robocoop or blender oh, yeah, good. Um, and it's a just going to a robocoop right, right, yeah, fancy one <laughs> yeah okay cool so we're just going to start cooking these down over a medium heat okay great okay so just sweat them down no color bring out the sweetness onions yep. going first yes right i've got another pan over here which is getting really hot a bit of oil in there and now we're going to brown the mince in there okay cool and what sort of mince are you using for this one uh, so this is lamb mince so okay, something a little nice. bit different yeah so, nice. you, so you can do that okay good um Use any mince you want, you know, beef, mixture of beef and pork and veal, anything you want, you know, it's yep. up to you. But it's, uh, you know, something a little bit different with the lamb. Okay. Garlic, just peel the cloves, and then I'm just going to do really, really fine slices. So a really sharp knife, and do this on a mandolin if you want. Um, and then that's just going to, you know, give us some great flavour through the uh, spag bowl. But it's going to, you know, when we see it and we present it, you're going to see these little, nice little flecks of their garlic. And it's so fine, you know, it's almost going to, You'll still be a trace of it, but it sort of dissolves a little bit, you know, so it's not going to be big chunks like that. Mm, nice. Everything's smelling good. Yeah, so still really on hot the go pan. At the same time. You're working me hard today. I know, I was going to say, yeah, the only trouble with this is you've got to multitask, so that's fine for women. That's why there's two chefs in the kitchen now, so we've got to pan eat. <laughs> yeah, because this guy's can't, can we? <laughs> yeah. See, look, let's not have a lot. I'm stirring the, the onions and I've just completely stopped with the mint. We've got a second pan to stir. Okay, cool, right, yes. Oh, yes, it's cooking away nicely, isn't it? That's it. So you can you can smell those onions now. You know you've got it. are starting to go translucent. You're getting that aroma from the onions. So this is a good time now to um, finish chopping the garlic and pop the garlic in as well. Keep it on that medium heat. Give it another couple of minutes, and then you'll get all those aromas from the uh, garlic goes in there. Yum. Okay, this is smelling good. I'm just breaking down that mince nicely. And this, this is where you're going to get all your flavour from. So this is the base of the uh, sauce. Right, you, did you some... use lamb mince because you wanted to, or uh, can you use any mince? No, no, you can use, you can use any, any mince, mince you want. Okay, but cool. it's just something a little bit different. You okay, know? nice. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't normally think about that. Um, so, uh, dried oregano, oregano, however you want to say it. Yep. That goes in now. So it's good to put this in this stage now. It's going to flavour those onions. So it's onions, garlic, oregano. Yep. But we're doing, it, we're doing it in layers. Okay, good. Some fresh thyme. Going to chop that up. You know, so if you've got this really soft... Um, Time, so this is more like summery time. If the if the stems are really soft, you can chop that finely. If it's more of a winter time and they're like twigs, yeah, you just need to pull off the um, uh, the leaves and then chop that. Okay, great. Okay, so time goes in, and then what else are we going to pop, pop in there? So we're just um, we're just frying them in, getting a bit of colour, and you can see there's quite a bit of liquid coming out there. Yeah, you can just drain that off quickly, you know, so you don't get that excess um, fat into your sauce. Okay, good. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to add, add to this in minutes. Um, I've got some tomato paste, which we're going to put in. So, good idea with tomato paste. You know, put it in the pan, give it two or three minutes just to roast in there. You'll bring out some extra flavours in there. Oh, yum. Okay, so we're going to do that, and then we're going to finish this a little bit, um, well, in the second segment.
Okay, brilliant. So it's all about building those layers, putting it in the order, giving it time to cook out. So it's important to do it in the order you just said? Yes. Okay, great. Well, I'll drain off this mince in just a minute. We'll carry on cooking here. Things are smelling fantastic. Can't wait to finish off this bolognese sauce. But now it is time to make probably the country's favourite pasta dish, the humble spag bowl. But not so humble when you make it, Mark, because the flavours <laughs> are smelling incredible. So that, the tomato paste has been cooking for a couple of minutes, yep. so you can see it's got nice and dark. That's, ready. That's nice. A little bit of chilli in there. OK, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's a couple of chilies. So, um, you know, it looks excessive amount of chilies, but just try the chilli first, you know. If it's really spicy, only put half in there. OK. You know, so these are not too bad. Uh, so we're going to put the chilli in there. Gives a nice bit of heat, especially for winter, you know, warm you up. Oh, yeah, good. Right, I'm going to toast that off. Um, we've got a little bit of flour as well, so this is great. Um, just helps thicken the sauce. So you're just going to put a little bit in... Um, and then just stir it through before you put any liquids in there. You know, you don't need to um, put any flour in, but just a little bit in there just holds it. Is it true in um, Italy they actually use milk to thicken up their spag bowl? Where'd you hear that? Wow, <laughs> from a reliable source, actually. No, yeah, apparently it's true, yeah, and they put it in, and I think it's uh, all to do with, like, tenderising the meat. Yeah. OK, and that kind of makes it like lasagna, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Without, without <laughs> the pasta sheets. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. One pot wonder. Yeah. yeah, there you go, it does make sense. Uh, right, so the, the uh, flour's stirred in. I'm going to deglaze with a nice glass of red wine. You know, red wine, chilies, meat, beautiful. So that goes in there. Bit of beef stock as well. OK, red wine, beef stock. Yeah, so you can see the, the wine's gone in there. It's come up to the boil, so we've lost the um, alcohol. Beef stock goes in. Bring it back up to the boil. Give it a really good stir. This is the time you can put your mince in. So that's been fried. You've drained it off. Drained it off, yep. Yep, pop all your mince in there. Actually, out of curiosity, as a chef, when yes. you're using red wine for cooking, what's, what's your go-to red wine? Well, someone told me once that uh, the better the red wine you cook with, the better the final result. Right, OK, well, that makes sense. But it's just it? not feasible, like, a $300 bottle of wine to make, <laughs> to make a beef stock is... Uh, so, so yeah, so maybe don't take that advice. Yeah, yeah. Drink so, the good stuff. But there's no difference between, say, like a, a Merlot and a Pinot. No, no. I mean, you're, you're going to get a better flavour. If you want to make a really good red wine sauce, then go for a stronger one, like a Cab Sav or a Merlot, and you'll get, you okay. know, you'll get oh, better good. results. Yeah. Good tip. Nice, thanks. So, stock's in there. Mm -hmm. You can see it's already thickening just from that little bit of flour. And now we're going to put the tomato paste in there. Mm. Uh, sorry, the tins of tomatoes. Let's give it a good stir around. Bring it up to the boil. And the key here is now is just to cook it slow for as long as you've got. You know, you cook it slow for about half an hour, you probably, you know, it is edible, it's finished, you can eat it. But if you've got two, three hours, put this on in the morning and just really, really slowly cook it. Mm -hmm. It will just be absolutely fantastic. OK, what are you going to do with the mushrooms? And then mushrooms, all going to do, I'm going to quarter them up yep. and then probably about 10 minutes before you want to serve right. it, pop them in so they're just cooked and then that's ready to go. We've got some pasta here. Yep. We're going to pop that in there, cook that. And it's all going to come together. Finish it with some uh, nicely grated, freshly grated Parmesan cheese. It's smelling incredible. Can't wait to try it. It's going to be delicious. And of course, the recipe is on our website at thecafe.co.nz. Uh, Mark, this is incredible. It smells amazing. It smells amazing. Thank you for that. Uh, what's on the menu tomorrow? Right, tomorrow I've got chicken. So we're mustard marinated in the chicken with broccoli and feta. Ooh.